Welcome to Open the Book. Hello children and welcome to Open the Book. This is our weekly assembly where we open the Christian special book, the Bible, and we listen to stories from it and sometimes we even watch animations of stories from it and we think about what those stories can teach us and how they can impact on us today. Before I tell you about where I'm opening the Bible today, I wonder if you'd like to answer these questions for me. You could pause the video after each question and talk about them with the person next to you, or you could just have a think in your head. Have you ever been on a long journey? Can you remember? where you were going or who you were going to see, were they special? How did you feel on the long journey? Did your feelings change over time the longer the journey took? Well, in today's Open the Book, we're gonna think about some people who took a really long journey to visit a really special person. Do you think you know who I'm talking about? Before Christmas in Open the Book, we were reading parts of the Christmas story. We met Mary, who was visited by an angel, and the angel told her, you are going to be the mother of the Son of God. We met Joseph, her shocked partner in life, who was ready to marry Mary. He couldn't believe she would be the mother of the Son of God. We saw Joseph get a visit in a dream from an angel who told him it will be okay to stay with Mary, look after her and look after the Son of God. And we saw some really shocked and surprised shepherds, some ordinary people who were told about this special birth the Prince of Peace on earth, God with skin on. And we saw as they visited the stable to see Jesus in the manger. So who haven't we met yet? They're special, they followed a star and they went on a long journey. Well, hopefully you're confident and you know that it's the three wise men. So why am I telling you this story after Christmas? Hopefully your Christmas tree has now been put away, your special gifts tidied and organised in your bedrooms or your playrooms. Maybe you had a nativity scene in your house and that's been wrapped up and put away safely for next year. Well, I'm telling you this story now, after Christmas, because Unlike our nativity scenes that show the three wise men visiting baby Jesus lying in a manger, that's not actually what happened. They had to go on a long journey to get to Jesus. And when they got there, Jesus was a little bit older than the baby we sometimes imagine him to be. So in today's Open the Book, we are going to be opening the Bible in Matthew chapter 2. And during this story, I want you to listen really carefully to the words, and I want you to picture the story happening. You might even want to close your eyes as I tell you the next part of our Christmas story. The star that went zoom, the star watcher's journey, and gifts for a king. The star that went zoom. Twinkle, twinkle went the stars, and the star watchers nodded and smiled. There's a pretty one, the first star watcher said. And look how brightly that one is shining, said the second star watcher. And the big one, the big one over there, cried the third star watcher. I don't think I've ever seen one so huge. Twinkle, twinkle went the stars. And then one of the stars went zoom. 
Did you see that? asked the first Star Watcher. Couldn't miss it, said the second. What do you suppose it means? wondered the third. So they all ran for their special Star Watching books. Twinkle, twinkle went the stars and the Star Watchers read and searched and scratched their heads. It's not an earthquake, said the first Star Watcher. We can be grateful for that. And it's not a flood either, said the second. And that's when the third Star Watcher went. Aha! I found it! A zooming star. That means that somewhere a new king has been born. But where? asked the other Star Watchers. There's no way to tell, said the third Star Watcher, unless we follow the star and see where it stops. Then let's do it, said the first Star Watcher, putting on his hat. Sounds good to me, said the second as he pulled on his long coat. I'll need to find someone to mind the cat, said the third, but I'd like to go as well. And so the Star Watchers gathered their servants and loaded their camels, and with the stars twinkle twinkling above, they set off after that special star, the star that went zoom. The star zoomed left, the star zoomed right. Over hills it zoomed, and deserts and rivers and mountain peaks. The Star Watchers did their best to zoom after it, but the hills were high and the deserts were hot. The rivers were deep and the mountain peaks were hard to climb, and that was why it took them so long to follow the star. For days and weeks and months they travelled until finally the star stopped and they found themselves in Judea at the edge of the Great Sea. This is the land of the Jews, said the first Star Watcher. Then the baby must be their new king, said the second. So let's find the palace, suggested the third, and give him the honour he deserves. They thought they had it all worked out. And so the Star Watchers headed for Jerusalem and the palace of the king. But what they failed to notice was that the star had zoomed somewhere else. Do you know where it had zoomed to? The Star Watchers asked everyone they met. We have come from the east, they explained. We are looking for a king. Perhaps you could help us find him, the newborn king of the Jews. Everyone was surprised by the question, and no one more than King Herod. What do they mean? He shouted at his advisers. I am the king of the Jews. Y -y yes, of course, stammered the frightened men. But, 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 but perhaps they're looking for the special king, the one God promised us many years ago. And where would they find such a king? Herod growled. In B -B -B Bethlehem, the advisor stammered again. At least that's what the prophets say. I see, Herod muttered, and then his eyes began to twinkle. Twinkle like two dark stars. Send for those star watchers, he commanded. I have something to ask them. The Star Watchers came as quickly as they could, and once Herod had sent away his advisers, he leaned over to the Star Watchers and whispered, The king you are looking for is in the town of Bethlehem. I want you to go there. It's not far. And when you have found him, I want you to return and tell me exactly where he is, so that I might honour him too. The Star Watchers nodded and bowed. They thanked the king and then headed straight for Bethlehem. But what they did not know was that Herod was an evil king. A king determined to kill anyone who tried to take his throne. Even a baby boy in Bethlehem. When the Star Watchers arrived in Bethlehem, the star was already waiting for them there. But it was no longer zooming. Instead, it crept along slowly, leaping them through the narrow streets of the town. And then suddenly it stopped and hovered silently over a very ordinary looking house. 
This must be the place, said the first Star Watcher. It doesn't look much like a palace, said the second. Well, we shall have to go in and see for ourselves, said the third, and he knocked politely on the door. An ordinary looking man opened the door, a man as ordinary as the house. We're very sorry, said the first Star Watcher. We must have the wrong place. Forgive us for troubling you, apologised the second. But the star, whispered the third Star Watcher to the others, the star is right overhead. And then he turned to the man at the door. We're looking for a king, the newborn king of the Jews. I don't suppose you have a baby here. And with that, the ordinary looking man smiled. A secret smile, a knowing smile. Do you know who the man is at the door? For this man was Joseph. As a matter of fact, we do, he said. Little Jesus is almost a year old now, but I think he's the one you're looking for. The Star Watchers filed into the house. The child was sitting on his mother's lap, playing with her fingers. And as soon as they saw him, they knew they were in the right place. One by one, the Star Watchers fell to their knees before him. Then they gave him presents, presents that they had bought all the way from the East. But they weren't the kind of presents that most people give to babies. No rattles or building blocks or soft toys. No, they were presents fit for a king. Bright, shiny gold, a rich perfume called myrrh and frankincense, a sweet smelling oil. The baby patted the gold and the jar that held the oil. But when he very nearly tipped over the bottle of perfume, his mother gently took his hand. Thank you, she said to the Star Watchers. It was kind of you to come. And so the Star Watchers stood and bowed and they said their goodbyes. It was too late to return to Jerusalem, so they set up their tents on the outskirts of town. But as they lay there asleep, each of the Star Watchers had a dream. There was a visitor, bright and shiny, glowing and gold. Any ideas who it is? That busy Angel Gabriel, perhaps. And the visitor had a message. King Herod wants to kill the child, the message warned them. You must not return to him. Go back to your homes instead. Go quickly and you will save the child's life. So the Star Watchers rose at once. They folded their tents, they loaded their camels, and rubbing the sleep from their eyes, they started for home. The stars twinkle twinkling, like gold to light their way. Well, that's almost the end of the story you know really well. But King Herod wasn't happy that the Star Watchers never came back. And he knew Jesus was in Bethlehem. He wanted him killed, but who was Jesus and where was he? So King Herod said a terrible thing. He simply said, I want you to go to Bethlehem and kill every male child two years old and under. Well, fortunately, the angel Gabriel came to Joseph in a dream and said, go away from here, hide. And that's exactly what Mary, Joseph and baby Jesus did. They moved to Egypt and they stayed there until King Herod died. And then they returned to Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. He was the son of a carpenter and God's own special son as well. And he did grow up, didn't he? And he performed amazing miracles and taught amazing things, things that we think about in our school today. Well, maybe some of those stories will be some of the stories we read in future Open the Books.
Well, in school, we have our special classroom prayer spaces, and you really like being given ideas on how you can use those. And you add beautiful things and you take time to pray or to think and to reflect. And that's really, really good. Well, I'm going to carry on encouraging you to have some prayer space at home, a special part of your bedroom wall, perhaps, or a corner in your bedroom, a, cha a place to be, a, a place to think. And I've got a prayer space idea for you, linking to our story today. In our story, you saw that God put a star in the sky to help guide the wise men to find Jesus. Well, I wonder if there's something you need guidance or help with. If you want to, I'd love you to make a star shape on a piece of paper and cut it out and to write your prayer for help or guidance onto the star. Maybe you could put that star on a black piece of paper so it looks just like the Bethlehem star we heard about in the story in the night sky. I'd really love to see your prayers or to hear your prayers. And maybe the grown-ups you live with might write their own prayer. Even grown-ups need help and guidance sometimes. Well, I'd really like to see if you make your own prayer star for help and guidance. Please send them to me via Class Dojo. Well, in school, we always end our open the book with a prayer, don't we? And we'll do the same now. What I'd like you to do is sit really, really still. And be really, really calm. And have a listen and have a think about the words I say. And if you agree with them, you can say Amen. Father God, we thank you for sending the angel Gabriel and having him help Jesus move to Egypt and be away from the evil King Herod so that he could grow up and perform miracles and teach us how to be the best people we can be. We thank you for the three wise men and the long journey they went on. Help us to think about the long journeys we're on, waiting to see family, waiting to see friends, waiting to go on that special holiday or visit that special person. Remind us that just like the three wise men, we will get there. We will get to that special place. We will see that special person again. Amen. Thank you, children. I hope you enjoyed this week's Open the Book. See you soon. The story of Christmas. Jesus and the wise men. This is Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hey Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset. Ah. As was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah, not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews' star first appeared. Oh God! 
And then King Herod told the wise men, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was, so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello! Oh, look! Wow! And they bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Wait! They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was, but God told them to go home a different way. So they did. And then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up! The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with Jesus and Mary. They stayed in Egypt until Herod was gone and it was safe for them to go home to Israel. <laughs> when they returned, an angel warned them about the new ruler of Judea, who was Herod's son. This way. So Joseph and his family went to the region of Galilee and found their new home in the town of Nazareth. Look good? Yep. We're taking where Jesus would grow up and eventually do all the amazing things God had planned for him to do.